Hello, David Burnham here. This video is going to be about statistical thinking in relation to our trade outcomes. So let me just define uh, a simple uh, scenario for trade outcomes. And I only want to think about winners and losers, and the winner is just going to be a 1% win and loss is 1% loss. Uh, that's just to keep the numbers simple during, during this uh, analysis that I'm going to do. And I want to compare a break-even strategy that has a success rate of 50% versus uh, a strategy that gives me an edge, uh, maybe a 60% edge in this case. So let's think about this strategy. If I take one trade, uh, what can I say about that trade? Well, not a lot really. All I can say is it's either going to be a winner or a loser. I can't really use any statistics or probabilities on individual outcomes. I can once I start using a, uh, looking at the collection of outcomes. So if I take 40 trades, I can then uh, work out the expected uh, number of winning trades, which is just 60% um, of 40, so it's 24. Okay, so simple stuff so far. Um, let's compare the number versus break-even. 20 versus 24. You notice that's a very small number. Uh, four trades make the difference between being successful and tread in water being at break even. So it's critical that those four trades are executed flawlessly. Uh, but of course we don't know which four out of the 40 are the important ones. In fact they all are. We have to execute all 40 trades flawlessly. Even if I do that I'm not going to end up with exactly 24 winning trades. Uh, there's always going to be random variation. Uh, so instead of 24 I might have 20, I might have 22, I might have 26. It's interesting to ask the question, how many, what, what range would I expect? And the answer is, well, it depends how you define the range, but this is a 95% confidence interval. Uh, you'd expect between 18 and 30 trades. The definition of that confidence interval is if I take 40 trades and look at the number of winners, um, that gives me a number. If I were to determine the number 100 times, then 95% out of 100 times, I'd expect the number to fall within the range 18 to 30. And if I look at break even, again, we have a range. And those two ranges have a strong level of overlap, which you can see more clearly if I look at this graphically. So the, the green bar is the strategy with the edge, uh, the yellow bar is the break even. So if the number of winning trades is anywhere between 18 and 26 on there, then it's contained within both of those intervals, and I can't really differentiate between uh, my, my, my performance uh, in terms of whether I'm breaking even or, or actually achieving success. So the only way around this is to actually stretch those bars until they no longer overlap. And the way you do that statistically is you just take a larger sample size. Unfortunately, it takes about 300 trades before we can really uh, differentiate and say with statistical confidence that I have a success rate of 60% versus a, a break-even uh, strategy. That's a problem when I want to monitor my success rate month on month. So what I've decided to do is just turn the whole process on its head and just look at the probability not of winners but of losers. So I have a table here which looks at the number of consecutive losses. This is for a 50% success rate strategy. So this is just like flipping a coin. So for example, the, the chance of flipping a coin and getting hedged three times in a row is one in eight. So it's half times half times half, one in eight. I can now think in terms of, well, how many trades am I going to take a month? And what's the worst case scenario for one month? So what's the one in a month outcome? So if I have 16 trades in a month, I've highlighted the, the 1 in 16 there, and if I extend that across, uh, that corresponds to four consecutive losses. So four consecutive losses would be a one in a month event for a 50% success rate. Uh, that is a worst case scenario, uh, but it's not statistically unusual. Okay. The interesting thing is I can then look at the, this number for different success rates and we see for 60% um, 
we'd expect to have three consecutive losses for 75% we'd expect to have two consecutive losses so this is the largest number of consecutive losses uh, which I would expect to happen due to random chance if I look at the next line down this gives me the number of losses that I do not expect to happen so I can actually start using these numbers to infer what my success rate is if I'm targeting a 60% success rate I do not expect to have four consecutive losses in fact I can say that if I've got four consecutive losses most likely I, I don't have 60% success rate I'm more likely to be at 50% uh, but if I'm consistently only ever having two consecutive losses then I conclude I'm at 75% success rate but I can also use this as a way of controlling uh, my uh, trade and behavior so if my target is 60% and I have four consecutive losses I can stop trading on the basis that this is an unusual outcome it's not what I expect to be happening uh, and start investigating and that's the point at which we have to start thinking uh, in terms of where is the problem so my hit rate is really the overall success rate of my strategy uh, multiplied by my execution efficiency if you like how well I can execute my strategy efficiently so I need to be able to define my strategy in terms of a trade and plan and checklist so I have to be able to articulate it and I have to also keep a record of what I've actually done and um, by comparing those two I can see uh, w where the problem is going to be so I hope you enjoyed this video I think there's some interesting ideas in terms of uh, looking at the number of consecutive losses uh, that can really help in our trading. Bye for now.